Hey, you're here with MVI, and I want to show you uh, today we're in a uh, 2020 Chevy Silverado. I do want to show you our new smartphone mirroring kit um, available. It is an HDMI input um, on these uh, trucks. Um, the module does also do cameras. I will not be showing you the camera functionality today or the install. I am going to splice in. I do have other video that shows that, so I'm going to splice that in so you can see that um, at the end of the video here but I did want to show you the option for uh, HDMI input and phone mirroring which we've been getting a lot of requests for so um, I'm gonna try not to screw this video up I'm gonna show you the on-screen display and then take the phone off the holder here and uh, show you some stuff but basically we got um, so we got an iPhone. Uh, what, what we have here is the uh, factory interface on the 2020, which you can which you can see here. Um, got the factory nav in it, and whatnot. And we're gonna add the uh, mirroring capability. So I've got an iPhone here. I'll plug in and um, get that up. And then I'm gonna access the interface. That is done by the uh, steering wheel button. And as you can see, the picture is crystal crystal clear on that. So. Um, Audio is through um, the aux input, so we do want to go to audio. And um, yeah, they've just. And let's get some. Let's see if I can get some. There we go. So the audio will come through um, the aux channel of the vehicle and from that point you can do whatever you want. I'm on YouTube right now, but um, you know, you can go to Netflix, let's go to this Denali video here and see what it's all about. What's up internet world, this is the Yukon Denali. So there you have it. Um, any of your apps that, that mirror, you can then, then do, so Netflix, DirecTV, things like that. Um, you can go ahead and and uh, and do so. Want to go to Netflix? We can pick that up. It's probably going to want me to log in, which I'm not going to go through. But then you've got your whole, you know, library of, of video right here on the screen. Great picture too, guys. Nice HD picture. So I'm going to go ahead and take the um, um, phone off the stand here and show you um, what's going to come in the kit and some different options. So I'm just going to go ahead and unplug this. We can go back to our home screen by simply hitting um, the home button. And let me see if I can get this out without screwing things up here. So with all that said, guys, um, it does activate by the wheel button here. So double tap of the hang up button and that will switch input. It's looking for the HDMI source right now. And then I can go back to the home screen. Like I said, this does do cameras as well. So if you wanted to add a front camera, um, it does auto activate for parking situations. You can also add a second rear for like a, um, a wireless RV camera. We get a lot of requests for that. Um, but you don't have to, the, the camera, the module does have the capability. Um, the module will hook up over in the right kick panel area over there. So all the cabling and whatnot's gonna have to stretch over that way. I do have a video that shows those connections, so I will put that towards the end of the video here. And then we're gonna have a supplied HDMI um, USB combo port um, that will be flush mounted somewhere in the vehicle. So that's gonna depend on where you want it um, as far as your preference goes. But it'll be this guy here. And this has got three foot leads coming off it that will kind of stretch over to that right kick panel area. Now, in order for this to, to stretch and, and go where it needs to be, you're gonna have to keep pretty much keep the port up here. So you could do like a flush mount here. Um, if you wanted to pop this out, eliminate this, put this right there in that place, that would be a nice clean look. Um, but if you're gonna wanna go inside your center armrest here, you are going to need some extensions so i am going to have that advertised on the site some different extensions and whatnot to to um, accommodate the length but if you're not going to do the extensions this ship standard it's only three feet long so you've only got so much to work with these are pretty much the two options i would do you could also choose to come down here 
although it would be a little bit harder to plug in. So if your iPhone, it's gonna be wired. This cable kit here gets sent out. It is wrapped in nice braiding, um, so it looks well. This is just for video purposes here. This plugs into the iPhone and this is what mirrors. So you then have got some, um, you know, three foot extension to kind of move around in the cab here and, and get it to where you want it. If you're Android, your phone does have to be compatible with um, screen casting and that'll come with a dongle. The Android is wireless, so the dongle will plug in right here. You pair your Android to it. Again, compatible phone. And then it will um, cast wirelessly to the front screen. So with all that said, um, on the audio side of things, it does run on the aux circuit. So it is gonna ship with this guy here that will need to plug into your 3.5 um, in the center armrest. So all this does pop out. I do have video footage of that as well. And this cable here comes pretty standard. I just dropped it, but it's long enough to go from here and then over. If you want some more length, we're gonna have to do a, an extension on that aux cable as well. But you're basically gonna run it through this um, center console area once it's popped out. This port will pop up. You can bring it into the console itself and just have it come up and pop up. You could even notch it slightly right here and have it come out nice and clean so it's just a cable that, that sticks out type thing. So we'll be finalizing some options on that. I'll get some feedback from the customers and whatnot. But this is our new HDMI kit, guys. Um, I will have it on the website. As usual, shoot us a text. The best way to reach us these days is uh, via web chat at gm-navigation.com. We do get floods of requests daily. We try to handle messages in the morning and then focus on shipments in the afternoon. So um, usually in the morning time, you can get a couple responses from us and, and we can also text or pick up the phone and call you if needed as well. So thanks for watching. Have yourself a great day and talk to you soon. But over here, guys, you can see this is the radio module we're working with. We're going to be working with these two plugs. Yep, the gray and the black. And then the one right next to it, this blue cable right here. All right, so. This guy here is in your way normally. It sits on this bracket and when I'm all said and done, I'll, I'll click it back where it goes. But just grab this guy and twist and get that out of your way so you can get in there and work, all right? You're not gonna hurt it. It will click back onto where it needs to go. So, it's gonna help to understand what you're working with here, guys. So you do need one of these. They're cheap on Amazon. Just search for uh, automotive pick tool set. You can get anywhere from four bucks up to, I spent a nice 20 bucks and got a huge set, but this is what you're gonna need, this guy right here. And the reason being is that GM puts these little release clips on here that are super, super tight to deal with. And this is not gonna wanna lock right now, but um, so, and then this sits, in there like that going into the radio so you got to go in there and get behind it and pry this back get that back out of the way and then the release sits right in the middle so if you know where it's at you can kind of feel and use the pick and pull out at the same time which i'll do here in a second same thing with this guy here All right, this has got a red clip, same thing. You're gonna wanna get in there and pull it back so you can depress this. That's what you're gonna be fighting. So once those are out of your way, you're in much better shape. But with that said, <sighs> and this tool right here is gonna be required. So you wanna get 
these three down so we can access them. Now in the kit guys, pay attention to labels. We go through a lot of time prior to shipping. Power and ground. These two right here are manual triggers. So in certain situations, you may need these. I'm typically gonna have them taped back right here. So unless you're doing something extravagant, just leave them taped. If you are gonna need them, I'll tell you, tell you you're gonna need them just otherwise leave them there but that's what these are they're manual triggers to use for an external toggle switch okay ground right here power come over here guys so fuse right here right next to it you can see a spade sticking out and that's accessory power now sometimes this fuse has already been moved over if that's so if you want to make these key on um, sorry I guess that one key on instead of hot right now that's constant hot if you move this fuse over here over that turns those to uh, accessory instead of constant so if, if that's already taken that fuse is moved over you may have to consider moving it or I've also in my instructions got a place where you can cut this sleeving back right here and there's a wire in there you can grab and tag to. It is in my printed instructions, so pay attention to that. But for all working purposes, this works perfect. It is tight, but you can see that's gonna just zip down nice and clean out of the way. Let me get the ground where it goes. I looked everywhere. This is really the only good spot to mount this thing. So I'm gonna send. It's already gonna sit on the carpet there. And then we've got some tape here. And if we want to go, it's already pretty well padded. But um, of course, this tape will go under here, help go to the floor. And then uh, if you want to put some extra foam there, you can. I, you don't want to get this module too hot, though. It does need to breathe. So then that'll sit right there, carpet down, everything back together. We are live. And we got screens, so that's good. So system is designed to uh, auto trigger in a parking situation. So go to reverse, you've got your factory rear, go back to drive, and now we've got our front kicking on. And that'll stay on below eight mile per hour. You can see the pictures um, pretty nice there, guys. So it's about as good of a picture as you're gonna get on this screen. Definitely gonna serve its purpose. Um, and the camera that I send does have the little IRs. It's the GM camera that they've used for the last few years. So it does help for nighttime viewing. Um, get above eight mile per hour, this will automatically go away. And then you should be able to toggle manually if you wanna pull it up going down the road at a stoplight, whatever. If your truck's lifted, you just need it. Double press and there it is. That can stay on as long as you want until you shut it off. And you'll shut it off by simply double pressing. So this is your toggle. If you had a, uh, a wireless in the back, since it is actually input one, 
when you toggle this the first time it would go to wireless or whatever other rear camera we are working on a third brake light as well for this toggle it again it'll go to your next camera toggle it again back to your home screen so there you have it guys um, aside from the camera obviously takes a lot longer to run and get into the cab but uh, auto activate in parking situations so it does have to see reverse first and um, that'll go on and shut off on its own so hope that helps as usual any uh, questions whatnot messages here in the app um, and also at gm-navigation.com use the web chat app there as well that's the best way to reach us talk to you soon